Well, how's it going, everybody, and welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. I am excited because today is another episode of Uncut. What that means is that I am going fishing with both cameras on, this camera right here, and the one on my chest. We are doing minimal to zero cuts on the entire fishing day to show you guys exactly what it looks like to break down a, in today's episode, a brand new lake and hopefully catch some nice bass. But I have to stop before this video starts and say I am so excited to partner with Bass for Beckers once again to raise money for muscular dystrophy. Now, if y'all don't know, Bass for Beckers is a organization that I've worked with in the past and they raise money to send kids with muscular dystrophy to camp while also having part of that money go towards muscular dystrophy research. I am incredibly proud to represent that company and I'm not just talking to you guys about the organization, I'm talking to you all about a giveaway to give away not just a brand new Skeeter Bass but an $80,000 boat but also a fishing trip with me. Y'all ask all the time, Tyler, how can we get to fish with you and this is one of two opportunities every single year that I do where I give away an all expenses paid fishing trip with me. And so if you guys want to check that out, the uh, the raffle tickets are $25. They are linked in the video description. Last year, we had the goal of the month of September raising $50,000. I think we raised $49,000 for muscular dystrophy. I would love to break that record and of course, hit that $50,000 mark. So please, please consider even just one raffle ticket, $25, whatever you can give. And of course, none of this is about me. All of this is about raising money for muscular dystrophy. So make sure you guys check out that link in the video description. But with that said, I say we break out some rods, we get to fishing on this brand new body of water, and uh, we'll see you guys out there for another episode of Uncut. For this Uncut episode today, we're going to do two and a half hours long of fishing. We're going to try to break down this brand new body of water. Just got back to Texas for the, uh, for the, for the fall season, and I'm excited to break down new bodies of water. So two hours and 30 minutes, boom, on the clock. We're going to start off by talking about some conditions real quick. Um, we are dealing with late summer here in Texas, so water temp is, uh, I don't know, 85 plus. I mean, once the sun gets up, that water gets, gets up into the, the high 80s, low 90s. And, oop, oh, I just saw some commotion right there. Give me a second, folks. I might catch you a fish here to start. Um, this lake that we have here looks like relatively dirty water. I mean, it's only two feet deep here but can't see the bottom I guess once the Sun gets up we'll be able to tell better water clarity but uh, it is late August air temperature today is gonna reach 95 97 degrees probably and we're starting off with top water because that's what you do early in this early in the the morning here in Texas if I can catch a few on top water that is always ideal can't always do it. Sometimes the, the spot you stop on, area you're fishing just doesn't have top water fish going. But I just saw some commotion right here. So I'm thinking top water is a possibility. This lake's got a mixture of, of, of regular bank, just retaining walls, blank bank, uh, a decent amount of reeds as you're seeing here, but these reeds are not in much water I'm seeing. As I kind of troll around the bank here, not noticing a whole lot of water on the base of these, which means that it's probably not very deep there. Um, fish could be there. Matter of fact, I'm gonna flip a jig there because I saw a fish, but, oh, and this jig does not have a, <laughs> my jig doesn't have a trailer. Oops. scooby dooby dooby doop. All right. Should probably put a trailer on that jig. What other conditions do we got to worry about? Uh, it'll be a little bit windy today. I'm around the corner right now, hiding from the sun that is popping out, but we definitely are going to have a little bit of wind on my microphone. So I might have to mic myself up here to mitigate that. But we're just kind of doing some shallow water frogging. I'm really just working the frog for the first, you know, five, six feet from the bank and then reeling it back in. Yep. Getting stuck sometimes. With how shallow it is, the fish are gonna be around the cover. And if they're not there, it's not worth working your frog all the way back to the boat. Bum, 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 bum. 
I do see a little bit deeper water here, which is, which is great, and some different shoreline grass. I don't know exactly what type this is, but it's, it's different, and fish like different. Oh, there's a fish out there. In Texas, though, when you see fish schooling like that, not schooling, busting like that, they're usually carp, usually carp or white bass. So, doesn't like make me want to cast it over there just because I know the history of what's around here. And it's that balance of like, I want to cover water, but I also know that fish this time of the year are just really lethargic. So it's not like they're going to come chase this thing down from a long ways away. So popping frog it is. I guess I could throw a buzz bait, cover a little bit more water. Um, but again, this stuff's not, not all that expansive. We just have some clumps here and there. It's not like the whole lake is covered in, in cattails. Come on, get off of there. In the spring, this stuff would be juicy. This stuff would be juicy, Jay. I wish I was seeing grass out from this. I'd throw a thunder cricket in a heartbeat. I got one tied on. Over there. Yeah, over there. Although I, maybe I am seeing grass out here. I don't know. Just gonna keep doing the frog for a sec. If you have not seen an uncut video before, welcome. These are definitely uh, a different style of video where I just, I just fish, man. I just fish, talk. Sometimes you might catch me, catch me slipping and I'll whistle. I don't know. It's a fun time. I try to keep the lighting and the exposure good on that camera back there, but when you're fishing an early morning deal, the sun's constantly changing, so can't guarantee the camera's always going to look the best. Come on. Okay, see, I saw another bust up there. There's fish around here. For sure. For sure there's fish around here. I don't know where they're, where they at. Yeah, these reeds don't have much water on them. This lake is down at least like two feet, which I don't like the look of, but what can you do? What can you do about it? You know what I'm saying? I guess my measure of success on days like this is probably a five bass limit. I don't know though. Maybe not. Maybe it's just catching a few. Having a good time. Gosh. See, big fish splashing, but I just know those aren't bass. Bass don't do that. Bass don't do that kind of thing. All right, I am seeing a little bit of what looks like hydrilla on the outside of these reeds, but it's not quite enough to make me cover water with a, with a vibrating jig. I'll tell you what might be a problem today is my trolling motor. My trolling motor's been having issues, so if you see some weird time discrepancies in my challenge, I might be pausing the stopwatch because my trolling motor has been having some issues. I'm gonna throw this topwater walking bait by the side of this stump up here. 
Oh, gosh, dang it. I'm throwing a lighter, a lighter one. I don't like how it casts. Oh, you're shallow. You're shallow. There we go. This rod is also way too big and stiff for this bait. This is a seven six heavy. This is not a not a small sexy dog rod. All right, so no fish so far on the reeds. Just trying to think of what to do. Cause it's really shallow back here. Not sure how I feel about it. Ooh, stump. There are stumps in here. I don't like that the water is down because these would definitely have fish in them if the water was high. It's muy frustri frustrating, frustrado, as the Spaniards say. Now, maybe I didn't start main lake enough. I kind of went back in a creek, not in a creek, you know, little pocket. But with how small this lake is, I just don't feel like Main Lake is really Main Lake. I'd probably take them just about any point and call it a Main Lake point. See, my trolling motor. There we go. Trolling motor wasn't turning on. <laughs> Some kind of fish was just right there. That'd be a carp. Gotta be. Oh, this stuff would be so good if it had another foot and a half on it. Holy cow. That was a bass. And we're gonna go back in with the jig. Oh gosh, bad cast, bad cast, bad cast. Dang it. That was a big bass. That was a nice one. Okay, so there are some fish in this stuff. Why he wouldn't eat the jig is confusing to me. Usually if I miss a frog bite, I can flip back in there with the jig and catch him. Odd. Okay, well. Maybe he just wants the frog. Fish totally missed it. Blew it out of the water. Okay. Makes me a little more confident about fishing this stuff while we got the clouds on it. Wish I had gotten out here half an hour earlier. I would have had more of the morning bite but your boy had to go to the gas station to take, gas station twice to take dumps because I don't know what I ate last night, but was not sitting well with me. I also can't cast worth a dang right now. Come on, get in there, thank you. See, these are the kind of reeds that are good. They are a little bit deeper, more clumpy, less like a line more clumps, at least good for a frog. There's other types of reeds I look for when I'm flipping or punching. 
But if I'm throwing a frog, this is the kind I want. Come on. Come on, little baby. I got one bite. There's more of your brothers around here. I know there are. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And now we are running into some reeds that have the sun on them. And I'm not as sure that I like these ones. Because the sun's already on them, bass ain't got no eyelids. I feel like the bass are going to run away from these a lot quicker. But we'll fish this little stretch. Yeah, what a bad cast. Ooh. Get right back there. Gosh, <laughs> I hate I hate when I do that. I don't open the I don't press the button enough, and so my lure doesn't go anywhere. Is it shallow here? Yeah, pretty shallow. My trolling motor's dragging. I think. Come on, this point just looks so juicy. How's that lighting? Ah, we're looking bright. We're looking bright. This little stretch is interesting because we've got we got reeds, but we also have some sticks. Oh, but now the sun's shining on it. I'm seeing that it's literally six inches deep up there. So not thinking that's going to be a hot spot for a bass. Yeah, that's really, that's really shallow. Okay, well, we got a little bit more reeds that are, that are dark, not in the sun, and then after this stretch we'll probably have to call an audible and figure something else out. I would just really love catching one on a frog to start this video. Even though that's not going to be a pattern that I can run throughout the day, I really don't care. I would like to catch one on a frog, please. And I also got to be too careful to not try to fish Texas like Minnesota, because as you all have seen, all my, all my previous videos, and I'm, I'm pretty sure a video or two after this one were all filmed in Minnesota. and. That fishing is just more uh, more simple. Fish are easier to find, usually easier to catch. Come on. Come on fish, give it to me. Ah, gosh, I need to raise the trolling water up. It's too shallow. All right, gives me six more inches of clearance. Mm 
You know what, a buzz bait kind of makes sense now that I'm seeing how shallow it is. How much water I gotta cover. Well, no, I'm, just, I'm still gonna keep just fishing the very beginning parts of that cover. Buzzbait would be great if I was fishing like, I don't know, more clumps that were all around the boat. But now I'm casting to a specific line. Come on, right here. Right there on that cast. Oh, what a juicy cast. Are you kidding me? Oh, come on. That ain't fair. That is not a fair one. It's unfair. Ba, 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 ba. Hallelujah, 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 he is wonderful. Oh, it's getting even shallower around here. Gosh dang it. There ain't gonna be no fish in here. There's not gonna be a single fish in here. Way too shallow. I also got stuck on a stick. Come on. Little pocket back here with some grass on it. Mmm. Come on. Tell me something good. Oh. My trolling motor is currently stuck in grass. Because it just got shallow. Just got really shallow. Ooh. Got me wet. That's how shallow it is. Get the chest mount right now, we're good. All right, let's uh, give these stumps here a cast. The old, the old spook. Nothing, nothing on that. See y'all, this is frustrating. Going from Minnesota where fishing is so fun to Texas, where at least this time of the year, fishing is straight booty crack. Don't like it. Don't like it at all. Not fun. Okay, so it seems as if the fish are not there. They're not doing that. Whatever that, whatever this is, they're not doing that. I say we go run to the dam real quick. Let's go crank the dam and throw top water against the dam that can be a good way to get a bite early and uh, yeah we're gonna pull the drill motor up and we'll restart the camera as soon as we get to our next spot we're at the dam is that has a lighting lighting's looking okay we are at the dam as far as I can tell the only rock in the lake there could be other rock points, but I don't see any, so. We're gonna throw some top water. See what we can do. Oh, my bait got stuck. I'm also gonna switch to a, uh, a larger walking style bait. This one's just too small. This one is too dang small. Do, do, do. And I, I had a completely white one that I used for that um, video on catching bigger bass. I just don't know where it went. I had one that upgraded treble hooks and everything. I don't know where it went. So that's just great. Keep myself away from the rocks. 
Top water, top water, top water. Where you at? Where you at, top water? Oh, here's my top water. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Found it. I was blind. But now I see. This rod is still too heavy for this, but it's what I got. It's what I got. Don't feel like putting a braid reel on a different rod. This is probably a good time to thank uh, one of the newer sponsors to the channel, Pro Guide Batteries, the hat that I'm wearing. If y'all are in the market for some new marine batteries, whether it's lead acid, AGM, or lithium, Pro Guide is the way to go. And that is because they've been making batteries for a long time. I think like 40 or 50 years they've been in the battery business. And uh, it's a really, really upstanding company. I know all the guys there. They're amazing guys. They really care about what they do. And they make the best batteries out there. They, uh, they've been, like I said, they've been making them for a long time. And other people that are coming out with lithium batteries right now, all they're doing is going to China. They're buying a standard lithium that everybody else already has, and they're putting their own sticker on it. And ProGuy didn't want to do that. So they designed their own lithium. I was different than everybody else's. And, uh, excuse me while I get out these rocks. And so their warranty actually means something because they've designed this product, they know it's good. Other companies' warranties don't mean squat because they've only been around for a few years. So how can you trust their product? And their product came straight from China. Didn't even, most of these guys didn't even design anything. So if you want to use code TRF, you can save 10% on your battery order. I've got ProGuide Lithiums in my boat and one AGM for my cranking battery. And let me tell you, it is awesome. It is a great, great battery setup. I'm trying to get the lighting better. There we go. All right. This may be a fool's errand, but got to give it a try. Got to give it a try. One of the best one of the best places to go on a brand new lake is the dam. Not gonna deny that. Don't know about late August, but or September by the time y'all are watching this. And also it's totally possible that I will abandon bass and go for crappie. I hope to not do that. But crappie have been biting in Texas better than bass have. So it's it's possible. Oh, someone's frisbee. Someone lost one of their junky frisbees. Oh, there's one. There's a fish. Hey, hey, look at that on the walking bait on the dam. He's not hooked very well, so I'm just fighting him very slowly. He's only got the back hook. He's only got the back hook. He's in the boat. Let's go. Hey, we're going to ding that fish right there in the angler bullseye. We're running an angler trip today, as I do on all new bodies of water. And that right there is our first fish. He would go 14, he's very, very skinny, so that's a keeper bass. Thank you, buddy, for, for biting. See, I knew there'd be a bass on the dam. Almost always is. He's not the size we would like. Also, he's got the hook just all kinds of places in his mouth. You chill, you chilling, bud? Chilling, bud? I gotta grab him by the mouth. I can get, oh, he has a colt, he's got a colt tag hole in his mouth. Some dumb tournament people that still don't have non-penetrating cold tags. Y'all, they work now. When they first came out, they didn't work, but now they work. So why are you still using old ones? Look, he's got a hole in his mouth from a cold tag. People are living in the Stone Age, I swear. It's not hard to live well a fish and not keep a hole in his mouth. All right, fish number one. Bing, bong, bong. Bing, bing, bong. Yeehaw. 
Not the size I want, but that is the species I want. I was kind of thinking for a second it'd be a white bass. Kind of expected that, but it's good. There are bass in here. So now we are, we are one for two. Oh. oh, something just, so oh gosh. <laughs> Guess my engine is not, not up enough. We are shallow. See, I, I like it when a dam has a little bit more depth to it and this one is not. We're literally in four feet of water right here. My engine was just in six inches. Yeehaw, what a cast. Come on. Give me a bigger fish. But hey, what's his face won the classic on a dam in the summer? Um, uh, what's his name? Hank Cherry. Hank Cherry won the Bassmasters classic. Now, of course, a much larger one with deeper water, and it was also June, not late August, so. A little bit different conditions, but hey. We both proved that it can be done. There are fish here. He is wonderful. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, we got some reeds. Oh, what a cast. What? What are you smoking? Come on. I'm gonna put my chest mount a little bit farther down. I can see my reel a little bit better, probably. Maybe not even enough there. There we go. How's that? How's that? I gotta be careful around this stuff. I don't get snagged. There we go. Wondering how, wondering how these got here. Are they like, is there, is there dirt here? How'd they grow? Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum. Hallelujah. I think one thing these videos also serve to do is show the reel in Tyler's reel fishing. That I'm not always going out there and just whacking them. No YouTuber is, no pro angler is. Unless you're like springtime and you know a good spawning area. I mean, there's, there's rarely times when you just from start to finish are whacking them. Especially in a new body of water, never been here before. Don't know much about it. I expect to, you know, struggle statistically more than on a body of water I know during a time of the year that's good. Because I've showed up to brand new lakes in the spring and smoked them. That's because the fish are big and dumb and shallow. They are small, they are skinny, smart. Oh, there's one. They are skinny, smart, and usually deep this time of year. But hey, there's a few. A few that are shallow. Come on, come on. Oh, you're strong. You're not, you're not that big. I mean, you're bigger than the first one. You're a good two-pounder. Let's go. Let's go. I'm scared of grabbing this guy. There we go. Got him. I almost always use pliers with treble hooks if I see it's in a precarious situation. And both these last fish have had the hooks in a very bad place. Can't really grab them in the mouth. So you gotta squeeze them by the pressure points back here. And I'm actually gonna lay this fish down for a second. There we go. Yeah, and I can actually grab them on the side. There we go. All right. Bada bing, bada boom. Fish number two of the video. That's a good two pounder. All right, ding. Mark that catch. And let's keep it going. I'm gonna restart this. Okay, we don't have that much of the dam left. We've probably fished about half of it, but I like that we've caught two. Big fan of that. Is 
Isn't it funny how when you're like smack talking the fish sometimes, like, oh, these fish are, these fish are skinny and deep and, and smart, and then all of a sudden they're like, nah, we're dumb and shallow. That's what that fish did. Now he wasn't that big, but he was shallow. One, uh, one thing I saw on Edwin Evers' Instagram, MLF Pro Angler, Bassmaster Classic Champion, Edwin Evers, um, he was talking about why the fishing is so tough in, in August, September. And the reason for that is because the shad have spawned in, in you know, April, May, depending on where you live. And there are, there are so many bait fish everywhere that oftentimes there's, there's too many that fish can't even keep them in check until the fall. So this time of the year, they have so much bait to choose from. So why the heck would they choose your artificial lure when they can just go after some actual bait fish? Now it's not till the fall when those bait fish start to die off that you see fish biting a little bit easier because one, they're hungrier, two, they're taking advantage of those dying fish, and three, as soon as they keep dying, there's less of them. But the fish's you know, mentality, metabolism hasn't changed until it gets cold outside, a lot colder. So that's why fall is good, because you're coming off a, a time when they have so much stuff to eat, and then their stuff starts to die, and it's like, oh, we gotta, we gotta act now. Well, hey, fishing the dam has been relatively productive. I've actually been kind of pleased with my success. And I've still got a decent amount left. I could probably catch one or two more. So let's keep this shindig going. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Also, I feel like on Uncut, it's easier for me to explain some of these YouTube-y things. Um, the like button, comments, all that stuff really helps. You might not think it does, but if you enjoy the channel, just drop a comment on every video. I know, I know it's a, you know, a hassle to get to the comment section and write something, but in order for the videos to do well, especially the, be the, the beginning is so important that when the video first drops, YouTube wants to see if the viewers that first watch it are liking it. And if they don't, YouTube does not promote it to the rest of your audience. It kind of take like a sample size. That's why the notification people that have notifications on, that's why that's so important. And we don't, as YouTubers, we don't want to talk about it too much because it's like, oh, our subscribers are going to get, you know, frustrated that we always keep talking about the notification bell. But that is what proves to the algorithm that the content, that the content is good. There we go. That's the third fish right there, baby. Hey, hey, let's go. Let's go, yes. That guy, I don't know if he would go 14 inches, but he is aggressive. There we go, yeah. Uh -huh. Pliers it is. These treble hooks get him really good. All right, he might, he might go 14. Either way, he's a fish, and that's a fish for our challenge. Let's go. Or less of a challenge, more of just a fishing day. Ugh, that lighting is getting bright. I apologize for the bad lighting coming in the next part of the video, y'all. It's this morning. But yeah, if you if you enjoy the content and you learn from it, pressing the share button to share it with somebody, commenting, liking the video. The like button is free. And I don't I don't know what the disadvantage is. There's no disadvantage of using the like button. So if you can, please use that like button helps out the channel a ton. And I'm, I'm really grateful to you guys that allow me to have this as a job. It's, it's, I'm, I'm really grateful because I get to wake up and instead of driving to the office, I get to drive to the lake and I never take that for granted. So thank you guys. But in order for us to make this sustainable for myself and my family, you know, we've got to have the channel continue to grow and the views to get higher. So. There's always work to be done, and I need y'all's help. So if you please, hit that like button. Smash that button, brothers. Man, I've been happy with fishing the dam right now. 
I'm definitely gonna come back to this lake with a square bill at a different time of the year. I mean, you know what? I could come back down it with the square bill now that I think about it. Because I guarantee you I've been missing fish like that aren't coming up to eat this thing. I, I bet you there are more fish in this area, so we'll think about that. I also kind of want to just explore other things than the dam. That's no fun. It's no fun for y'all to watch somebody just fish the dam. Yeah, I got a DC reel. I got I got a DC reel. It, it makes noise when I cast. <laughs> I don't get the whole DC craze. Guess who doesn't have trouble casting with in the, into the wind? Me. Well, I mean we all have trouble, but I don't need a digital chip reel for that. Guess who can skip a dock really well with that DC? Me. That's gonna be a fish. I just have a feeling. Come on. Come on. Brother, this guy stinks. Yeah, during these, these uncuts, you're also gonna hear a lot of TikTok references. But I, I, I kind of imagine these uncuts, like not many of you are probably watching and like actually intently paying attention to the whole thing. You probably have this on as you're driving to work or doing the dishes or doing the laundry or just kind of chilling. I doubt anybody's gathering around the fireplace to listen to this video. But I could be wrong. If you are, send me a picture of you and your family at the fireplace. But yeah, this is probably more of a podcast type form. Oh, I didn't click that last fish. Oops. Ding. Ooh. There's a lot more bait fish up there than I thought. Something spooked them and the whole the whole bank was just boom. You know what? I am seeing more fish here. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna come back through here with a crankbait just just for a little bit. Maybe back to that reed patch real quick. So yeah, I do feel like there could be some fish out here. Although we ain't done yet with the top water. Top water's going down, thunder cricket is coming up. We gotta work our way around this intake here. Thought that a thunder cricket might be a good choice for this. Could be some fish hanging on the, hanging on the edge. There also could be fish inside there, but there's not really any way to get in there. There's like one, 
one or two holes and that's a hard skip. <laughs> There's a skip right here that I could get in. Actually, you know what? It's probably worth a cast. If I can skip it in there, I might be able to catch a fish. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Tell me about it. It's a rusty gate though, gee. My line is, okay, we're good, now we're at the bottom. All right. No fish resulted from my skip. Unfortunate. Uh oh. Ah, crap. Yeah, that'll happen. That'll happen when fishing around a metal fence. You'll done get stuck. There we go. I don't know why I picked up Thunder Cricket. That wasn't the best choice. Whatever. Oh, it's so bright. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sure the camera's just blown out right now. Oh, no. Dang it. Oh, my one cast in there gets ruined by the fence. There we go. Got it. Let's make another one. Perfect. Well, three fish on the dam is pretty good. Like I said, though, I'm gonna go back with the square bill or uh, medium diving crankbait. Actually, it's kind of a kind of a medium. It's a shallow medium diving crankbait. I also wonder if this corner is deeper. Like, is this a good frog corner? We'll find out. I feel like it could be. Oh, it does look deeper. Heck yeah. We're pulling out the frog real quick. One more cast with this. Top bottom. Top bottom walking bait going away. Ding dong. Frog time.
I don't know why, when I frog fish, I get a lot more quiet. When I was fishing the walking bait on the dam, I was very loud, I realized. And now I've gotten here and I'm all stealthy. I guess frog fishing is just more serious. More at stake, baby. Got to be listening to your frog. To hear if it gets disturbed by any monster bass. Come on. This is juicy looking stuff. If it only had a foot more water on it. There's one though. Hey yo. Got one on the frog. Got one on the frog. Hey yo, let's go, baby. Let's go. Good decision, Tyler. Good decision to try the frog. And that's the that's the chunkiest one we've had all day. Really chunky fish. Ate the poppin' pad perch down the gullet. And that is fish number four. I knew there'd be one in here. I just knew it. That guy ate it on the tongue area, so we're gonna get, let him go as quick as possible because those fish don't usually do too well out of the water. Tongue bleeds a lot. There we go, beautiful, though. another two pounder. That's four keepers. Let's go, baby. I like this, I like this lake. Oh, we got some water on the lens and the lighting is looking bright. So we're gonna change something real quick. All right. Keep it going, baby. Let's keep it going. I like this. I like what's going on. Sorry the video started off so slow. Hey, I did what I thought was good. You know what I'm saying? I did what I thought was right. I just believe there's got to be some five-pounders in here. Gosh, it's already getting bright. Ugh. Oh, my sunglasses. I don't know why I said it. If it's getting bright, I'm putting on my, <laughs> my buff. I do want to put on my buff, but sunglasses are first. And then hoodie. Ah, oh, that feels better. If I get another bite in this stuff before I'm done, I'm gonna come back through and flip it with a jig. It just feels right to me. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna flip the jig right now. Into this hole. Just looks right. Maybe not.
Ugh. Bad hook set, Tyler. Bad hook set. Oh, see, gosh dang it. Oh, I was not ready for that. For some reason, I was not ready for that bite. Dang it, dang it, dang it. Just got a bad hook set on him. Lost him. That one still counts though. Not 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 as a fish for the challenge, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ding that one on the angler app because that's a fish, you know. Whether or not I caught him, that's a fish. Well, if I hear of this lake coming up in, in water level in the fall, I'm coming out here with a frog, y'all. It's gonna be fun. Just some of the stuff's not really in the water. But the stuff that is has got fish. Oh, come on. Wow. Ah, my frog got stuck up there. I mean, like, really stuck. How the heck is that possible? That must not be a a reed. That's different. That's thicker. Uh oh. Yeah, that's like a stick. How am I gonna get up there? Oh, great time for my trolling motor to act up. There we go. All this is is the, the root system of a reed. That was thick. We just spooked something out of shallow water.
All right. We have ran out of good reeds, so now I'm gonna grab my flipping stick that has a grass jig on it. And we're gonna go back down that bank. Before we go back down the, the dam with a shallow diving crankbait. Got ourselves a good little, good little thing going on here. Little, little plan. Come on, turn on trolling motor. There we go. Oof, it's bright. Get out of here. All right, I'm guessing flipping is not the deal. 
I got the few stragglers on top water and then nothing on the old flipping rig. That's okay. It was worth a try. I'm glad I did it. Just not enough fish in here, I don't think. Although you always imagine there's got to be more than eat your top water. Because a frog is not a stick bait. Stick bait you go through to clean your spot. Frog usually not. Usually a few left over after you fish a frog. Last flip with the jig. No, not last flip, second last flip. That's the last flip. All right, nothing on the flipping jig. We'll keep that out in case we find some deeper reeds later. It's time to throw a medium, medium diving crankbait. This thing should dive to five-ish with this setup here. Let's trolling motor ourselves on high and get back down the dam. Randy Howell style. Oops, that was not good. Oh, no, rock. Thought I had a fish. There's one. Oh, dang it. 
Ah, I had one. Man. Okay. That's good. I felt a bite. Had a bite. Barely nipped at it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little slower. Work a little slower. I was kind of, it's kind of blazing past this area. Probably set the hook when I shouldn't have. All right, even though I got a bite on this, I don't know if I'm feeling it. But I look around and I'm like, I don't know if I'm feeling anything else either. <laughs> Looks like this is my best plan of action right now. There are docks, I like fishing docks, but I don't like fishing docks at this time of the day. I feel like the fish are not there yet. The fish, fish need a little bit more sun to cause shade under that dock. There's not a whole lot of shaded portion of docks yet. All right, I've fished enough of this. I have fished enough of this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the trolling motor up and we are gonna go explore. I'm just gonna drive and see what there is to see. I may stop and graph a little bit. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. All I know is for sure I'm taking this spook and I'm moving it back here. As 
and I probably won't be needing that anymore. So that's turned off. Gonna move this to the ground. And uh, let's see what we can find, all right? We'll pick you all up in a second. So one thing that I like doing on, on new bodies of water is early in the morning, maybe before those fish are, you know, biting on these deep spots, I'll, I'll kind of go through and graph them, mark some waypoints on the brush piles, the rock piles, and then come back and fish them later, not fish them, you know, immediately after. I find, at least in my experience, that that yields me more fish if I don't just graph and fish right away, so. Ah, uh, there's some bait on this on this point. I just don't see any like rock or brush. So for the next few minutes, this is what I'm going to be doing. This is no fun to watch uncut, so. Turn the cameras back off. Just wanted to explain what I'm doing to you guys. And we'll see you in a second. All right, so with an hour and, with an hour and something left in this uncut, I'm actually gonna raise the camera up quite a bit because that eliminates the sun problem. Well, it doesn't eliminate it, but definitely lessens the sun problem. So let's get this camera angled again. All right, probably not gonna deal with as much backlit type thing. Yeehaw. Graphed around a little bit, fished a few spots off camera, but it, if this uncut already has, you know, too much non-fish catches in it, I don't want to put too much more in, so. We found one cool structure over here by a bridge, and it has a creek, a very, very defined creek edge leading into it, so we are going to throw a drop shot against this little concrete, probably water intake, I believe it is, and then work our way back out this creek. And if we don't get anything on this, I'll kind of throw the, the offshore stuff away. I don't know where any of the brush piles are, and I've only found one didn't have any fish on it. So I think our best bet is to stick shallow and probably skip docks for the, the other hour of this challenge. So that's my plan. What's yours? Find out it. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Singer. Sometimes these concrete structures are good for a few fish or one big one. That's what I've noticed. Nope, that felt fishy, but might not have been. I'm not sure. Cast back in there. Looks like there is a fish on this side of it. If my calculations are correct. Oh, it's so hot. I don't like this. Too hot.
this time of the year, there's so much stuff in the water, like fish wise. Like I'm looking on live scope and I see fish everywhere, but they're not bass. There's, there's gizzard shad, there's threadfin shad, there's crappie and white bass. Just this time of the year, man, everything is plentiful. Besides the large mouth, they're generally harder to find this time of year. All right, nothing there on the drop shot. We're gonna skedaddle on ahead to uh, those creek channel waypoints I was talking about. Time warp this next part, Tyler, of getting to the waypoint. Ooh, brush pile. There is a brush pile there. Are there any crappie? That's the question. I wouldn't mind catching a few crappie. Now would I? No, I wouldn't. Where's that brush pile at, right there? There's one, hey, let's go, baby. Crappie. Some good old Texas white crappie. Ouch, ah, gosh, man, crappie are little, little suckers. Little, little sucker, come on. No, no, stop it, stop it, okay. We found a crappie brush pile, so we're gonna we're going to distract ourselves for just one minute by catching a few crappie for you guys, and then then we'll get back to the bass. But I can never turn down the opportunity to catch a few crappies. They're too much fun. Gosh, why? My trolling motor is now not working at all. I literally can't go anywhere. What the heck? There we go. Now we're on. Nope, now we're off. There we go. We're gonna keep my foot on this pedal. <laughs> and I gotta call in Coda on the way home. Figure this crap out. Cause that ain't cool.
All right, I'm done with this. We are not, we are not fishing random creek channels and stuff. Just, uh, it's not gonna be the way to have a good day, I don't think, today. If I knew this lake better, maybe it'd be better to do that, but I don't know this lake very well, so. Clear my spool, we're gonna go skip docks. We may poke behind this bridge over here, find out what that's all about. Could be, I guess I'd have to look at the depth back there. Maybe it's a little, little deeper hole, in the backwater area. I don't know. All I know is I'm not liking the offshore stuff that I'm finding here, so. Pull the trolling motor up. Hopefully it works the rest of the day. That'd be nice. And uh, we'll see y'all when we see y'all. I'll lower this camera pole down. Also put my power poles down a tiny bit. There we go. As we're going under the bridge. Might as well graph the bridge too. Oh, looks like there's fish. <laughs> As always, bridges have fish. Who could have guessed? All right, what is there to see back here? I know that bridge is definitely gonna hold some fish in the early spring, that's for dang sure. But, uh, I don't know. The rest of this just kind of looks like flat mud bank. If I'm being honest, I don't really see many interesting features back here. Nah, not much. Not getting the good feels. Let's go back to uh, some docks and skip them. Okie doke. Rage crawl. Feel the rage of my of my crawl. Huh? Boom. Ah, stop it. No. That's a problem. I gotta fix that. Okay. Jig coming on up. It is dock skipping time. Do I think there's going to be many fish on docks? No. But am I good enough to catch the ones that are? Yes. I am pretty confident in that. Beware dock fish. If you are here, I'm coming for you. You have nowhere to hide. Nowhere you can hide from me. I am your master now. So there's a white little crane right here, herring kind of thing. That's probably a good sign. I'll tell you what a good sign is. Good sign is when I skip out. It's gonna say when I skip like that and have a masterful skip, but I did not. Just had a, a, an okay skip. Here we go. Oh yeah, daddy's back. The key to a lot of these, you know, East Texas docks is finding ones that have brush. So if they have the brush, they're usually better. Live scope helps me, helps me do that for sure. But you can find it by just casting around. Great, my trolling motor has decided not to work again. This really stinks. Thank you, Minn Kota, for such a great product. I legit can't go anywhere. 
it's it's getting power because I can turn it, but I am not. The button's not working, and I know one of the workarounds to this is to go underneath and and pull or push the pin that connects the circuit. I did that two days ago, and it was fine. There we go. There you go. I may have to go in there and do it again. I just I think I've got a faulty pin. There's no way why it should work sometimes, but not others. That doesn't make any sense. Gosh, Tyler, I have not skipped docks in like a month. I am not on top of my game, to say the least. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this. I just want to catch fish. That's all that I want. And it's like once the sun rises, gets to sinking 8 o'clock, 8.30, fish are just dead. Nowhere to be seen. They, I think this time of the year, man, they just go off and suspend, which is just, it's, it's hard to, hard to catch them when they're like that. Almost impossible. I'm trying to intercept the few that don't go out deep. Because you know there's got to be a few. Old resident fish. Tell you what, though. This water was, I mean, it's, it's down like a foot and a half. If it, was, if it was normal pool or flooded, sheesh, I'd be having fun today. I would be flipping my heart away. Those reeds would be good. Frustrating to go from Minnesota where every dock has a fish on it to Texas where I believe every dock has a fish, but they just don't bite. Uh-oh, we got some doggies coming down to bark at us. Uh-oh, here they come. And we're going to fish their dock next. So joke's on them. I'll bark right back.
fight yourselves. There ain't nothing to be angry about. Gosh, if I ever have a dog that's a barker, that thing's going to the pound. I will never have a dog that barks like that. I want a nice, calm dog that likes people. I don't need a watch dog, I have a gun. Hello, doggos. Hello. These fish are so dumb. Come on. Just bite for me, will ya? Will you just bite one time for me, please? I got a backlash. Wow. I wasn't paying attention. Gee. It's about the worst backlash you can get on this reel. Literally. Quiet. Good grief. How y'all doing? What's up? Jim? Steven? How you doing? How you doing? Doing good? Love it. I'm just trying to catch a fish. See, you two younger ones look nice. You older one, you look a uh, little, little worse for wear, my friend. Oh, okay, all right. Come on, jump in the water, man. Is your, is your, is your bite as bad as your bark? Come on. I'll throw hands. I'll throw hands. Y'all like, y'all, y'all like, I'm trying to talk. Can you let me talk? Y'all ain't got no bass anyways. Oh, one more time. One more cast. Maybe a jig is not the best thing under a dock this time of year. I don't know. It is at other places. get our way to one more dock and uh, I don't know I love docks but this just ain't working man this ain't working it's like I gotta go deep but I don't know where to go I ought to go find another brush pile and catch more crappie. That's what I ought to do. That's my best chance of catching more fish, to be honest. That's kind of, honestly, this uncut is going how summer fishing goes, late summer fishing, at least in, in the South. Like I said, if you're in New York, Minnesota, Michigan, North Dakota, Idaho, you know, your fishing's amazing right now. That's not like the rest of the country, though. We all are struggling on the bus of struggles. And it's just hot. Hot and heavy around here. There's one. Yeah. 
gosh. Finally, finally got one. Okay, on the jig. I don't know if this dock just provides more, more cover or what the deal is, but there's one right there on the cage fighter jig. <sighs> All right. Thank you, friend. Ding dong. Mark it on the app. My light is just horrible right now. See if there's more than one, eh? For the boys. Yeah, I mean, this dock has way more shade than any others. It's got a huge awning here. It casts a big shadow. Could be why a fish was here. I don't know. There's no brush pile here on this dock, so that is what makes sense to me. Come on, buddy. Any more of you? Any more of your amigos? Your little amigos? Okay, okay, okay. Well, at least we caught one, you know. That proves that docks, I, I, it, it could work. Might not be the best pattern, but caught a fish doing it, so. Can't rule it out now. Gotta keep them honest. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Let's see if I can catch one by the red, white, and blue. This guy knows what's up though. He got his Yamaha 250 on his pontoon boat. Okay, you know what? Got one on the dock. I like that. Not a giant, but it's a fish. Feel like for the rest of this challenge, I should just skip it skip docks. So, oh gosh, what was that? Slipped out of my hand early. Ah, oh, these reeds have some, have some depth to them. Hey, oh. These would have had frog bites this morning. For sure. For sure would have. It's good to know. These are deeper. Deeper main lake reeds. And still might have a fish right now. Who knows? Okay. Okie dokie. Let's, uh, let's pull up trolling motor. Go find us a stretch of docks that looks like it's got some depth and some shade. Preferably close to the main lake. Let's go. On that last dock is that that was a floating dock. And the other ones I had fished were uh, stationary docks. So I'm thinking there could be a floating dock deal going on. Oftentimes, I can't explain why, but fish just like to be on ones that are floating more than ones that are not. So we got a, a stretch of floating ones, then we'll jet across and fish a few that are not. But I don't know. I just don't really have much else that I can do today, you know. Yeah, 
there. And don't worry y'all, I'm not hitting their boat. I'm hitting their their boat float. I had a TikTok blow up the other day. That was of me setting the hook, missing a fish, and the jig hits the dock on the way back out after the hook set. And then I flip back in there and hit the same post, and I'm like, all right, I'm done. And people were like, man, we, I, I'd be throwing hands at you, and there'd be there'd be pellets hitting your, hitting your cowling if you did that to my dock. And I'm like, brother, there's no damage being done. Come on. Come on. Have a little fun. I think people are unable to have fun nowadays. Unable to take a joke, especially if against if it's against you know their side of whatever issue it is. People are just insensitive little pansies. Comedy is not safe anymore. It's on both sides for sure, not just one political side. There is definitely brush under this dock. I cannot, I cannot close range flip. It's a downfall of mine. Not on top of it. Not on top of it. Third time's the charm? Nope, third time's not the charm. How about the fourth time? Yeah, fourth time's the charm. Well, maybe, maybe docks are not the deal. And that was just a random fish. The likely the likely outcome there. The docks are not the deal. How's my lighting looking? It's okay. I've had worse. Oh gosh, Tyler, man. Y'all should have seen an uncut of me skipping docks in Minnesota last month because I was not doing this. Okay, take that back. This is the worst backlash you can get on this reel. And even then, that's all we had. There was nothing dug down way deep in there. You're never gonna lose your line because of a backlash. Oh well, lost my entire range crawl.
because of that dumb skip. I probably need to be super gluing these on, but whatevs, kind of lazy. Kind of feeling lazy today. Hey, clouds. How about that? We love cloud cover. Cloud cover is nice. All right. Ah, gosh. One more dock on this stretch here, and then uh, I don't know what to do. Wish it was just a different time of the year. There's a lot of things I see on this lake that I like that are just not players right now. I'd love to throw a jerk bait and a flat-sided crankbait on some rocks. But that's just not that's not a deal that plays in August. So that's how it be. Last cast on a dock, right here. Last dock cast. We're gonna fish this little island here. We're gonna jet back into that cove. And then, actually, when I, when I idled in here, I idled over a point that was basically a nothing point, but it had some dots on it, so we're gonna see about that. And then that'll probably bring us to the end of our time. Like you know if the water's high, fish are spawning against this thing. You just know. As in, as in springtime, they're not going to spawn in August, but. Just looks dang good. Oh, I can't wait for the pre-spawn. It's going to be so much fun.
Oh gosh, no. There we go. You know what, I kind of actually want to fish that bridge with a square bill. Even though it's not quite the time of the year for that. It's kind of what I want to do. So I'm going to do it. Who cares? Who cares? I'm going to do it. Ain't nobody stopping me. This lake will be juicy in the spring, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Pretty sure I have a square bill rod. Not out, but ah, you know what? I'll just throw it on this rod. But I gotta redo my crankbait. Cause this here is not a square bill. Chartreuse black back. Hard to beat it. bill I believe these are upgraded treble hooks could be wrong but they feel slightly upgraded okay cranking time My scribble running straight. Yeah, it is.
come on, this doesn't make any sense. Wind blown little bank. I know it's not main lake at all, but there's got to be a few fish back here. I can't believe I'm not catching a white bass. With how many white bass are in this lake, or at least it looks like, how have I not caught one? One thing I see is that this bridge is, is, is uh, clogged. There's no actual water flowing through. It is clogged by, uh, by some sort of grass. I don't know if it's dammed up or... Yeah, it kind of looks like this is dammed up. Wow. There's a, whole, there's a whole backwater area back there, but it doesn't look like you can actually get to it. That's a bummer. I was hoping we'd have some water flow, but we don't. Huh. Okay. It's a bummer. It's kind of the whole point of fishing a bridge. All right. Well, that was a bust. Let's go back to that point, drag around for a little bit and see if we can finish out this challenge on a high note. We got six minutes left. Let's go plug around that point, baby. Okay, here we go. Final few minutes. Wish I had found some more crappie. Um, probably pick up the crop shot. You know what? There's a there's a spot that I saw that I graphed earlier. I totally forgot about. That looked like a juicy offshore spot. So we're gonna pause the timer. Give ourselves five ten minutes over there. This old tracks is just falling apart. Thanks, Minn Kota. So the, uh, what do you call it? Timer went off when I was driving over here. So technically, our two and a half hours are done. But I'm not finished yet. Not until this spot is done. There could be bass here. There could be crappie here. I'm willing to find out. If my trolling motor would work. There we go. I gotta get that fixed. Real bad. Six XD it is. few more casts with the quaint bait and we'll call it a day. I'm hot. The wind and slight clouds are nice, but it's still so hot outside. All right. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. That was a frustrating day. I'm, I'm glad that we at least found some success fishing the dam, but just, it's not what I wanted, you know? Although after catching two out of the reeds, 
it's it's good to know that the reeds are in play if the water's high enough and or if we get you know an overcast day and i can basically poke around the entire lake and find all the reeds that have uh have enough water on them that could be a viable deal but on days like today that's not the case too hot fish are not staying that shallow for that long they are just there overnight when it's cool to feed and as soon as that sun comes up they are gone so well hopefully y'all have enjoyed this video i love doing these uncut episodes because y'all get to see the the whole process what life looks like there's two guys crappie fishing on these points behind me and they've been here all day they haven't moved so i think i'm going to come back out here another day and graph where they're at and find them find them crappie piles but uh hit that subscribe button if y'all enjoyed this content i love teaching y'all how to become better bass anglers and hopefully these videos help do that so We'll see y'all next time right here on the TRF.